My name is Christian Luscher, and I'm a professor at the Department of Basic Neuroscience of the University of Geneva, Switzerland. In my lab, we have a long-standing interest in the neural basis of drug addiction. In today's video abstract, we're going to discuss a study where we have succeeded to induce cellular and behavioral hallmarks of cocaine addiction simply by stimulating the reward center of the brain. Addiction is a chronic, relapsing disease where individuals compulsively consume drugs despite harmful consequences. However, not everybody who uses drugs will become an addict. In fact, the majority of people can use even the most addictive drugs, such as cocaine, without ever losing control. How the brain controls the progression from recreational to compulsive drug use is a central question in addiction research. Hi, I'm Jean Terrier. Hi, I'm Vincent Pascoli, and we are going to take you through the experiments. We started with a transgenic Dat Cree mouse and injected a virus containing a floxed version of the gene for channel rhodopsin into the ventral tegmental area. This led to Cree locks recombination selectively in the dopamine neurons. In the final step, we implanted an optic fiber that was connected to a laser, which the mouse could activate by pressing a lever. Mice quickly learned to self-stimulate and received the maximum number of rewards fixed by us to 80, initially in about two hours, and at the end of the 12-day acquisition period, in less than one hour. We observed the first drug-adaptive behavior when we brought the animals back into the apparatus after a few weeks of withdrawal. The mice pressed the lever over and over, even though the laser was no longer turned on. The analysis of synaptic transmission with electrophysiology revealed a plasticity that was identical to what we and others have observed with cocaine. In a second series of experiments, we associated a mild electric foot shock with the laser self-stimulation. At this stage, we observed something very interesting. The mice fell into two classes, those that stopped self-stimulating and those that continued unabated. About 70% of mice resisted to the punishment they had to endure in order to self-stimulate dopamine neurons. This is about three times as many as with cocaine, where only 25% resisted. Activation of dopamine neurons therefore is sufficient to induce relapse and resistance to punishment. As a matter of fact, self-stimulation is even more efficient in cocaine to elicit this feature that defines drug addiction. But why is it that some mice are resistant to punishment and others are sensitive? What is different in their brain? Using CFOS as a marker for increased activity, we observed that in resistant mice, something was going on in the lateral orbital frontal cortex. We then used electrophysiology to confirm this hyperexcitability. Indeed, in the slice preparation, injecting currents led to more spikes in cells from resistant mice. Okay, resistance to punishment correlates with hyperactivity in the orbital frontal cortex. But is this relationship a causal one? To test for causality, we used a chemogenetic intervention by expressing an artificial inhibitory GPCR in neurons of the orbital frontal cortex. We then injected an artificial ligand that reduced the activity of these neurons, which reduced the fraction of resistant mice. Strong stimulation of VTA dopamine neurons is sufficient not only to be reinforcing, but also to induce late-stage adaptive behavior. The most exciting finding of our study was that some mice developed a compulsive cell stimulation that continued unabated even in the face of punishment. Our study is thus in line with the dopamine hypothesis of drug addiction and may generalize to other forms of the disease. Any substance, for example highly palatable food or behavior such as gambling, that activates mesolimbic dopamine neurons would carry the risk of inducing addiction. Certainly, the activation needs to be strong and sustained such that some individuals go all the way and become compulsive users despite all the negative consequences. We believe that insight into the underlying neural mechanism will guide novel rational therapies for a disease that is currently without cure.